This is a great event tonight, and uh, so much appreciate the people that we're going to hear from. The, the reason we're all here is to talk about border security. And I just wanted to take you back 10 or 11 days in Washington and talk a little bit about the bill that passed right before Congress left town. Um, this was important because you all played a role in how it eventually turned out. You may have heard that the majority leader of the House of Representatives lost a primary earlier this year. It kind of startled when that happened. So when it came time to replace the majority leader, unfortunately it was kind of just a status quo, as Scott pointed out, a status quo rubber stamp, keep things as they are, we're not going to change much, which concerned me. This thing that has been going on for the past two months down the border, and believe you me, the president should have been on the border. There is no excuse for that not having happened. And the president come to the border, every television camera in the Western Hemisphere would have been trained on the president, he'd have gone to the intake facility in McAllen or Westlaco, come out, talk to the cameras, and could have said to the mothers and fathers of Central America, do not send your children across Central Mexico. It is dangerous, they can be harmed, and we will send them back. Had he said that, that would have gone a long way towards mitigating the problem as it existed. As it turns out, the numbers are significantly down. Uh, the number of reasons why that is, and the number of people taking credit for that. Can the Congress take some credit? I'm not sure. We did pass something, though, the House did, right at the end of the month of July. And it was significant because you all, you all changed it as it came through. Remember, we just had a leadership election where it was status quo, rubber stamp, business as usual, don't change anything, don't upset anyone. We got an election in November, we're going to win, don't get in the way. But when that bill came, finally we were able to see it, and many of us had been asking for weeks, we know you've got this in development. They were Texas, I mean, this low Rio Grande Valley, I mean, that's... That's our state. We want to know what you're thinking about. When we finally got to see the bill, i got to tell you, not only was it disappointing, it was, it was going to be ineffective. So a lot of us just shrugged our shoulders and said, that's not something we can do. You all got on the phones. You made your voices heard. Sure, I heard you, but they heard from you all over the country. Uh, Senator Cruz and Senator Sessions were very helpful for House members to understand what was at stake and how to meld this thing into something that actually could be meaningful. Look, what were you telling us? Send the National Guard to the border and send the children home, right? Yeah! <laughs> Required some alterations in the 2008 asylum law, the details of which uh, are probably uh, not interesting, but at the same time that had to be changed, and it was. Look, the thing that lit the fuse on this, if you go back and look at the numbers month over month, things changed in June of 2012. What else happened in June of 2012? Deferred action for childhood arrivals, the president essentially deciding he's going to change immigration law all by his lonesome here in this country. And when he did that, it was a green light. And the people in Central America don't kind of figure the nuance of what a presidential directive means. They just saw that if you get here, nobody's going to prosecute you, no one's going to send you back. So they worked like the Dickens to get here, and the cartels found a business opportunity. Their business plan was charge people three, then five, then eight thousand dollars, get them to the Rio Grande River, and let the state of Texas do the rest. So this started happening over and over and over again, and in fact, the, the, the fact that it was occurring with such rapidity was really overwhelming any system that might be in place. I did go down to Lackland Air Force Base with Greg Abbott and Ted Cruz. My son was stationed at Lackland 10 years ago. It's kind of the land that time forgot, but those dormitories had no business doing what they were doing. They were never designed for that purpose, and the business of Lackland Air Force Base is to train young Air Force recruits to, to airmen. And that activity that they were doing only interfered, not to mention the risk of bringing other things that you don't want into a dormitory type population. So it had to change. It did change. I think one of the biggest things that happened in the bill was the payment to the state of Texas because Governor Perry called up the National Guard. The federal government did not have to reimburse taxes for that activity. The bill changes that and says Texas, well, 
can't say Texas because that would be an earmark, but any border state that feels that it has to call up its National Guard, it will be reimbursed, and that was an important part. Um, and I can't tell you what a difference the National Guard has made. Sure, our guys on the border were, were working their hearts out. They were doing everything that we asked them to do. But the mere fact that the National Guard is going to the border, it changes the equation. In the mind of a cartel or a child trafficker, they don't want to face an American military uniform. And again, they're not sophisticated enough to dissect through, parse the language, and well, a, a National Guardsman can't arrest me. No, they just know it's an American military uniform coming to the Rio Grande River, and they don't want any part of it, so they backed off. I really believe that's why the numbers are down. So I'm not always on the same page with Rick Perry, but I credit him. If credit where credit is due, he called up the National Guard, he got him there, the numbers are down. I think the credit goes to the governor, and we ought to reimburse him for that effort. And the final things that were in the bill was uh, if these guys are going after someone and they go on to national wildlife area, you've got to stop. You've got to dismount, you've got to get out of your truck or whatever and pursue them on foot. This bill would allow the uh, law enforcement to traverse the area of National Wildlife Refuge along the northern side of the Rio Grande. There are so many places where people get in there and disappear. I know some of the people are coming across and giving themselves up, but just downriver from that activity will be a bunch of others coming across with the intent for criminal activity. This will go a long way towards or shutting that off. And then finally, something was important to me. I introduced a bill that said for the governments of Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Mexico, to the extent that you will not do your job, and we are having to take care of your children, we will bill you $15,000 per child. There is some reclamation of, of uh, foreign aid monies that goes to those countries for not doing their job. So that's a, that's a great start. Um, what's going to happen? The Senate has already gone home and left. But the fact of the matter is that the House hadn't done something. And we could have passed a bad bill that really I didn't want any part of. But if the House hadn't done something, it gave the President a free reign to do whatever he wanted this week or next. At least this time, at this point, he has to come back and address what the House has already done. The Senate has to come back and address what the House has already done. The President says he needs money. I don't think that's accurate. I think there's money in those accounts that they haven't spent. But if he says he needs money, we show him how to get the money. Comply with those things, Mr. President, and we'll start talking. My time's up. Thank you very much for having me. And this is where, where is Congressman Burgess? Is, is he still here? He had to go. Well, that's a shame, because I don't like to talk about people when they're not here. <laughs> Let me tell you something. What he said wasn't true. 90% of it was completely false. I wish our political leaders would shut up, come and listen, instead of using this as a, as a me. That, that makes me mad. <laughs> I'm going to go off topic for a minute. I'm sorry about it. Bill Defonso Ortiz, please stand up. This is one of the most amazing cartel reporters. He's not a cartel member. He works at the cartels. Il Difonso is from Mexico. He's a legal citizen. Don't worry, I'm not pulling a fast one on you. He lives here. His family had to leave Mexico. His dad had, man, his dad had to leave his ranch because of the Zetas. Was it the Zetas or the Gulf? The Zetas, yeah. Wasn't safe anymore. The ranch is fine. He just can't travel on the roads. You know? So he's here, he's a reporter, and he ruthlessly reports on cartels. At Breitbart, Texas, we put our money where our mouth is, and we've been hiring reporters along the border. We're starting to develop sources in Mexico to report on these evil people. These cartels, I'm not sure if they're going to appreciate that. But you know what? I don't care. I hope they don't appreciate it. Let me tell you something. I promise you that Il Defanza, since he does work at Bright Park, Texas, and I'm the director, I can say this. He will be writing about the fact that that congressman just showed up, spewed a bunch of false information, and left. Yeah. Did, anybody notice, did anybody notice that he at least had the decency to wait until these men from the Border Patrol who just came up here from Laredo, do you both have families? 
You have families, right? Right, so you have families. Now I know for a fact, Hector, you worked last night. What hours did you work? You left work at 9 in the morning. You got to Dallas at 10, or 12, I'm sorry. Okay, to come and speak to these people. Did that congressman have the respect to wait until he was done? Anyone? Okay, enough said. So the numbers are down right now, and they're not down, the numbers are down from how high they were, right? Let's be clear about that. They're down because it's the summertime. Every summer the numbers go down. That would be like saying, you know, like, hey, it's not hot anymore, we don't need air, let's not worry about fixing the air conditioner, it's December and it's not hot anymore. The heat has gone away. It's like, no, the heat didn't go away, it's winter. It's coming right back. It's a cycle, people, it's a cycle. My goodness, man. So we're gonna write about that, because I don't appreciate somebody coming here and making a photo op for themselves, taking time from, well, from these men, and taking time from me. I don't appreciate it. And taking time from you so they can spew a bunch of stuff that isn't accurate. Ask me what I think about the National Guard on the border. Ask me. What do you think about the National Guard? I'm glad you asked. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I support the men and women in the National Guard. I appreciate what they're doing. And I appreciate that the state of Texas did a symbolic gesture to send people down there. I really do. But how many of you, when you heard Governor Perry talking in Dewhurst and Strauss, how many of you heard them say, we're going to secure the border, we're going to send these thousand guards? Did they tell you in that? Maybe I missed it. But I'm going to tell you something. As a guy who spent a year and a half down there and that dirty stuff, getting ticks and hit chickers and itching and all the scary times I had out there along the whole border, and as a guy who like tries to, to do everything I can for these guys because they do everything they can for us, you know, that press conference offended me. And I'll tell you why. The Rio Grande Valley sector is 25% of Texas border. There are five, right, five border patrol sectors in the state of Texas. There are nine on the board, U.S. border with Mexico, okay? The Rio Grande Valley sector is a small part of the U.S.-Mexico border. It is a small part, it is one quarter, of the Texas border with Mexico. How many of you realize that when they were talking about securing the border, they are just talking about sending guys to one section? How many of you knew that? Yeah. Not too many. How many of you didn't know that? There you go. A sea of hands. I'm going to assume that y'all did not raise your hands twice. I have this light on my friends. But I saw a bunch of hands. So Laredo sector is one sector over. Okay? So when you're in the Laredo sector, man, or you're in the, the Rio Grande Valley sector, it looks good. There's DPS everywhere, God bless them, they're away from their families. I get it. I'm not criticizing the men and women in law enforcement. They're everywhere down there. It's great looking. It still isn't working or Fal Furious wouldn't be so overwhelmed right now, which is the county north, right? Which is the station north. Let me tell you something. When you leave the Rio Grande Valley sector, you have roughly 70 some odd miles before you get to Laredo, the city of Laredo. That's in the Laredo sector, right? Guess how many, and y'all are gonna laugh at me who were on the trip. Yet when I first drove that, not the first time, when I first drove that after the law enforcement surge, guess how many state troopers I saw during that 70 some odd 80 mile stretch? Zero. zero. Guess how many National Guardsmen I saw, of course, zero. Guess how many Border Patrol agents, no offense to you guys, it's about how they're assigned. They've already spoken out and said 70% of them were taking care of unaccompanied minors and family units and not on the border. They've already spoke out about that. So I'm not blaming them. I'm blaming the government, the different levels up top, and I'm blaming the state for not doing something about it. I drove that many miles on the border as a professional who knows what their, their air equipment looks like, who knows what all their stuff looks like, who knows. I drove that long without seeing security. That's not okay. I learned horrible things about that border in Laredo, which is immediately across from the Zetas territory. Horrible things. I called Julie. I called different leaders and I said, we gotta do something. So they got together, they went down there, they saw it for themselves.